Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Emma and this is Alex. In this video we want to show you what it's like to stay on a local Maldivian island, how you can do it on a budget and how we did it for completely free. The Maldives is so much more than luxury island resorts. Many visitors don't realise that it's possible to stay and enjoy all the benefits you would expect, but at a fraction of the price of the resorts. Local islands have become much more accessible over the past 10 years after the opening of official ferries between the islands. Before this, tourists would have to take expensive seaplanes to get to their final destination. The ferry does take much longer than the seaplanes, but you won't mind the journey there, especially for the price. This episode is the next part of our series where we're looking back over our five year roller coaster journey to full time travel from filming a TV show to losing it all whilst battling depression. We flew to Male from Beijing after finding a deal online for accommodation on one of the islands for just £300 for the month. We found this deal by simply searching Maldives on booking.com for the dates we wanted and ordered them by cheapest first. We then researched the islands that came up and settled on Mataveri a tiny but idyllic one kilometre wide island with just the one guest house open. When we arrived at the accommodation, we had a bit of a brainwave. We had recently finished a trip around Europe with a photographer friend of ours helping with his shoots. He supplies photos to Lonely Planet, National Geo, as well as a bunch of other publications. So we decided to bend the truth and say that the reason we were in the Maldives was to edit a video specifically for Lonely Planet. I heard about fake it till you make it, so I thought, like, why not give it a go? <laughs> I didn't ask the owner for anything directly. I just kind of wanted to plant an idea in his mind, and luckily, it did. So after the owner gave us a tour of the island, which didn't take long as it was very small, he had a proposition for us. He said that we could stay uh, for one month for free, including food and all the excursions that we could ever want, in exchange for a promotional video. We couldn't believe that it actually worked. <laughs> We'd only been doing this whole video thing for six weeks, and at this point I hadn't even edited a video, so I didn't even have a reference point to show him. He just believed us. He just took our word for it. <laughs> what a fool. <laughs> so basically, with zero experience and the gift of the gab, we somehow managed to land ourselves our first proper video job. Actually, leave it in the comments down below. Have you ever had a similar experience where you've managed to talk your way into a job or somehow managed to wing it so you've got something that you didn't really feel that you were qualified for. So leave in the comments when did you bend the truth and also hit the like button as well just <laughs> for good measure. So it wasn't long before we set off to work and the next day we were actually put on a manta ray excursion. Now I was super excited for this because swimming with manta rays was one of the things right at the top of my bucket list of things to do and I couldn't believe my luck. This would go on to be one of five times that we got to go and film and swim with manta rays, but nothing beat the first no, time. It was nothing short of magical. So we went off in search of these amazing animals and we couldn't believe actually how easy they were to spot. They were just feeding on the surface of that beautiful blue water. Nothing actually prepares you for how blue this water really is. The camera kind of does it justice, but just in reality with the like, the ever stretching blue. Oh. <laughs> I did really appreciate the experience at the time, but looking back and having captured it on film, it just helps me to appreciate it even more now. Also want to compare this trip to when we went to the Philippines and we swam with whale sharks mm. and both of them were in like wild situations but in the Maldives it was completely wild and we had to go hunting for them whereas in the Philippines it was they're waiting for you in a specific spot because yeah. they've been fed and that was very disappointing. Uh -huh. it, was, it was not the experience that we'd hoped for in the Philippines. We actually did it the wrong way around I think. We started off on a high and then we were disappointed with the low. Like we should have done the Philippines first and then the Maldives. Going forward for us for trips like those were both contrasting learning experiences mm. because that's we know how we like to see our wildlife and we would try and get more of that because it's just perfect and I think also it's a lot more rewarding when you go to look for an animal that's not guaranteed to be there and then you spot one that feeling Another cannot level. be compared <laughs> that was the most amazing yeah. thing ever so over the next week, we spent our time enjoying the island, the beach and the wildlife and spending time in the water became pretty much the norm. 
We filmed a number of snorkel trips as well as the manta trips. These activities really are the main reason for us to go to the Maldives. Hands down the best Over reason. the relaxing, I think the actual activities in the water. The water is so clear as well. The visibility is amazing. And you can never get bored of swimming <laughs> with manta rays and turtles. No, not never. possible. <laughs> That said, looking back now at our time in the Maldives, we probably didn't appreciate it as much as we could have done. I mean, we definitely appreciated it and we felt like we were so lucky to have got that first job, but we definitely weren't completely present at that moment in time. The filming did quickly become work and although we did enjoy ourselves, especially on the activities, I really think we could have mined more from the experience. Yeah. It was our first ever video job and it was really hard to switch off completely from the work, especially as we had a month to kind of capture lots of moments on the island and we didn't want to miss anything. The thing is we had paid to come here originally and the dynamic changes when you are exchanging like work for the things that you want to do. So true, actually in a weird way, like it sounds amazing to get these incredible things that you want to do for free, but actually it's far more fun when you pay for those things. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I still really appreciate the opportunities and the experiences that we had and the fact that we got to do that for free as like a job, it was a dream come true. And getting to relive it now by yeah. going through the footage is giving us like a second wave of appreciation. As well as filming the promo video for the island, it was the first time that Alex actually edited anything and our first ever videos on the channel were edited on this island. I remember asking my friends for feedback on Facebook of the first videos that we made. <laughs> yeah, some pretty honest friends. <laughs> I remember someone saying that we were just too wooden and uh, <laughs> like, although it hurt trying to use it as constructive criticism to try and play around with our camera presence. Mm. Talk, talk energetically. I know, but I don't know what to say. Nobody likes us when we're wooden. <laughs> we got no personality. Because <laughs> with me, play with me on the camera. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. We're trying something different now after having all your comments. I took them really well. So from now on, we're going to try something more like us. From that point onwards, we decided to prioritize having fun whilst filming above all else. Emma's just coming out the toilet and I really need to go. So, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go in as well now. <laughs> Such a small little girl. That's <laughs> <laughs> not going in any kind of... So after that, we spent a lot of time just kind of trying to work on our camera energy and, and not being so wooden, <laughs> as well as also trying to work on this promo video to get done by the end of the month. That kind of didn't have a clue what to do in yeah, all honesty. We were making up as we went along. <laughs> it made it easier that we made friends with other visitors to the island and we had an absolute blast really and we even managed to get some of them on camera to do some testimonials for the promo video which was great and we also spent quite a few evenings socializing on the boat bar. As the Maldives is a Muslim country, alcohol is not allowed on the local islands. You can only get that on the resorts. That said, they were able to bend the rules a bit and actually worked around this by having a bar on an old ship which was anchored away from the island in kind of international waters. <laughs> We couldn't pay for alcohol on the boat. They kept a tab that they were going to give to you at the end of the trip. And I remember getting the bill as we left because <laughs> we got everything for free. So yeah. we were so excited. And then when the bill came for 500 pounds for alcohol, <laughs> like I started questioning my drunken choices. But it wasn't all drinking and snorkeling. Alex also got involved with a local event. Guess who got signed up for a Maldivian football team? So they want me to play, today is the first day of training and it's for a tournament for a celebration of post Ramadan which is in about two weeks. So they've got to see me play today. So I've decided to go for a red top to strike fear into their eyes and I'm wearing my best football boots for hiking or for football. All of these guys haven't been eating between sunrise and sunset. So right now it's about five o'clock, so they're gonna be pretty hungry and weak. So when I'm playing, bam, 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 take that Maldivian kids. It was so hard playing on sand that was mixed with coral in those shoes. I was most certainly not the English savior they were looking for. These shoes were the worst ideas in the world. Everyone there had full football kit, they had really nice shoes, they have imported me some shoes 
from Male, the capital. Ramadan has finished. So it's now the day of the tournament. There's people coming from all different islands. We've got people from Male, the capital, from Ukalas. That's the only two islands I know in this whole of the Maldives, but they're coming. So I've just been given my kit. I've just been told by one man that the locals are really excited to have a foreigner and they feel really proud to have him here. So let's go let them down. This competition was way more serious than I expected. And when I turned up and saw a pretty big crowd, I knew this was a big deal to them too. The first game was really hot. Uh, I didn't get to play after the first half. Maybe I was too bad, maybe not, not really sure. I've got a boo-boo on my leg, and I hate playing with a boo-boo. It wasn't the fairy tale story that I hoped, as we got knocked out pretty quickly, to be honest. But I was still able to get my little mitts on the trophy. <laughs> The final trip that we had left to film were the fishing excursions. And we've been putting this off, we didn't want to do it because I'm not really interested in fishing and Emma as a vegetarian certainly has no interest. No, I did not fancy seeing people catch and club fish. <laughs> <laughs> this was the first time we actually felt uncomfortable filming. I don't want to fish. But because we had a job to do, we felt we had no choice but to do it. And did we catch fish? Oh yes, we couldn't stop catching fish! <laughs> it was like unlimited <laughs> amount of fish just jumping onto the boat basically. It was awful. I didn't actually partake in the fishing myself, but some of the other guests who were asked me to hold the line for like one minute. And during that one minute, <laughs> I felt a tug on the line. <laughs> I still remember <laughs> as they pulled it up and it revealed that it wasn't in fact a fish but an octopus. I caught a bloody octopus <laughs> and I thought to myself, oh, that's fine, it's an octopus, they'll throw it back. They did not throw it back. You're good at fishing, you have to smile, we're having fun, remember? Smile for me, remember? Remember that time you killed that octopus? No, we stopped it, I didn't kill the octopus. You could have taken off the hook. It's funny. You're having a great time. It actually really upset me. It I was a lot more sensitive at that period of time and it actually made me feel way more uncomfortable than I already felt being on the boat trip. So yeah, it was a disaster really. Despite Emma's reservations, the meat eaters <laughs> among us had a lovely <laughs> fish dinner. And at this point, I just want to point out that it's worth going to the Maldives alone for the Maldivian breakfast. Mahuni is a typical Maldivian breakfast was served with like fresh roti and then like tuna, coconut, chilies, onion and I can't explain how good it is but I ate it for 30 days straight. <laughs> and he never got bored. <laughs> After a month in the Maldives we finally delivered the promo video and they absolutely loved it. <laughs> okay looking back it's pretty rubbish if you want to see it check in the comments there'll be a link to the video. I like to think we've improved a bit <laughs> since then. <laughs> but this trip was so important to us because it gave us the confidence to go and get further work like mm -hmm. this which as you'll see in the next video we got a bit too much work. So leave down in the comments below have you achieved any of your bucket list things to do and if you have did they live up to your expectations would you stay on one of the local islands or do you need a bit more luxury and would stay on one of the resorts but that is it <laughs> that is time to say goodbye so like comment subscribe and thank you very much <laughs> see you next time and all the kids together beans out me and Emma have decided that the best way to travel is to make videos for a living. Think about this, you can do it anywhere in the world. So obviously we are right now in Colombo and we've got this beautiful view of the city. It's really oh, nice. Look at that.